Hi, welcome back. The previous video we watched was all about setting up the Raspberry Pi Model B Plus with Raspbian uh, Debian image and getting the Wi-Fi up and running and also wireless keyboard and mouse. In this video we're going to extend that to add the NOcean uh, transceiver module and get it communicating with the wireless switch temperature sensor and um, magnetic read switch sensor. Um, in order to start this though we need to make sure that the Raspberry Pi has got the latest updates so there's a few commands that we need to do. So first thing you need to do is open up the um, LX terminal. We'll just do that now. Okay, now make sure that's clearly in view there. Now in here the first thing we're going to do is a um, an update which we did before so we're just going to be able to skip that and we're going to go to do the um, an upgrade which puts in some later software as needed. So you still need to prefix with sudo uh, and then apt sp dash get space upgrade upgrade. Okay, now hit enter and that will run for a few moments. Yes, we do want to continue. This is downloading uh, some of the upgrades that are available for the Raspberry Pi uh, core system. Once this is downloaded, we will do the install of the Raspberry Pi update with another sudo command. We just have to wait for it to finish downloading, of course. I will link into the website the uh, reference information I'm using to um, configure this. It's um, a PDF document that's on a Dropbox, how to set up a home automation server. Um, it was actually linked from the NOcean website um, for setting this up. Not sure how long this is going to take because I've never run it before. Wow, it's been over half an hour now and this thing is still going strong with the um, app get upgrade command. So I guess it has a lot to do and a lot to go through. Uh, it's pretty much sitting there with the CPU maxed out. I'm trying to do installs as it's uploading and we still have one more command to do the uh, uh, Raspberry Pi firmware update after this one. So hopefully that one won't take too long and we'll be able to get on with the actual task of playing with the NOcean modules. Let's wait some more. Alright, finally this thing's finished downloading and installing all of the updates. Now we've got to run another one. So this will be the um, Raspberry Pi update. The command is basically the same except instead of upgrade we will do install, make sure I spell it correctly, RPI dash update away that goes. So let's see how long this one takes. I'll uh, pause the, oh I guess it's done already because probably most of it was done with the um, previous command. Alright so let's just stop the video here and uh, I'll have a quick look at what I got to do next and we'll come back. So one of the things we have to do because the NOcean wireless controller uses the serial port on the GPIO headers, um, the Raspberry Pi by default uses that for debug text on power up and things. So we actually have to disable it. So the instructions in the PDF that I'm going to link actually tells you how to um, do that. They have a script that they've already prepared that's on GitHub. Um, the command that you see on the screen, if you can read it, um, sudo wget https raw.github.com slash lurch slash blah 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 all the way through. I'll include the, it's, it's in the document so I'm not going to try and read it all out right now. Anyway this theoretically is going to download the script to the uh, user folder for me. So if I spelt it all correctly which I hope I did. It seems to be busy there now doing it. And then it's going to apply a, an execute modification on it using Chmod. So uh, okay that's now completed and it does not look like there were any errors so that's good. Um, now we need to just run it so sudo space rpi serial dash console space disable. This should disable the console on the Raspberry Pi and there we go. Now we need to do a, um, a reboot in order for this to take effect. So I'll just restart this now. 
So while I was just restarting, I took the opportunity to power it down and actually plug in the um, an Ocean Pi wireless adapter for it. So the last thing we have to do here now is to actually install um, FEM because the wireless version of the N Ocean transceiver that sits on top of the Pi, um, you cannot use the same um, serial port commands as you would use with the USB adapter. So the FEM is the only way that I've found so far that will allow you to communicate and also initialize the Wi-Fi adapter and also any of the remote uh, sensors that are attached to it. So, you know, we've done all the updates to the Pi and now we just have to do two simple commands. The first one is to download the latest version of FEM, which you do with a wget um, space http colon slash slash fhem dot de so German German uh, sourced forward slash fhem uh, dash and the latest version right now is 5.5 .5. if you try this other than basically beginning of September uh, you may have to just check for the updated versions so in this case it's 5.5 .5 dot deb for the Debian image now just press enter and that will download it so it just takes a few seconds as you can see busy downloading it right now It'll be done in just a moment if you have a decent internet speed uh, I have a 30 megabit download and a 5 megabit upload uh, it doesn't really take too long at all so it's got uh, just a few seconds left it's almost done And there's the download done, so just a, you know, maybe 30 seconds or so, that was all. And the last command requires admin root access again, so you need to prefix it with sudo, and then it's, you can install the package now, so it's dpkg uh, dash lowercase i for install, and then the name of the package, which is fhem uh, dash 5.5 dot t e b and that will install now i forgot to hit the record button the first time around so if this throws an error it's because it's already installed um, but hopefully it'll just overwrite what is already there um, but these are the two commands you have to do anyway and there we're going it's reading the database uh, unpacking replacement fam yeah so it's just overwriting what i had so you may get a slightly different message because it's the first time you run this um, but it will actually unpack. It's a full um, Perl based web application. So it's just going to install itself, and once it's done, um, it'll start up FEM and we'll be able to access it directly from the web page. Um, so starting FEM, that's done. And I happen to have noticed know that FEM is actually um, running on port. Uh, 8083 of the computer okay so I've now just finished working through the instructions that are detailed on the N Ocean, well linked to from the N Ocean site and also um, one of the updates that was provided on the Element 14 website um, by Greg Fenton he did an article a little while ago on Internet of Things and detailed how to get the uh, N Ocean up and running using the uh, FEM uh, website that installs on the Raspberry Pi as well. So now that I've done that, um, everything should be working. So I've just brought up the website I'm showing you on here on the, on the page. It's the uh, FHEM website. And I think you can just go to the event monitor, clicking on the bottom here. And theoretically now, if I click um, one of the events on the button, mainly on here, um, we should get, there we go, it's now detecting the button being pressed and released the other button, so it's A0A1. If I just um, pull this off of one side and clip it on the other, we should get the B side buttons. Yeah, I just picked it up as I was pressing, that's B0 and B1. So that's pretty good. Uh, that's that one. Let's just test the radios. I believe to make them take effect 
you have to press the button on them. So this is the uh, magnetic sensor. So that's this one. And if I just put a magnet near it, you saw on the screen there, it's open, closed, open, closed. So it is now detecting the events. And if I bring up the temperature sensor and I push the button on this one, that's the, the temperature sensor here. So if I just push the button on this, um, it's now, well, I guess the temperature sensor is a little different. So I'm just going to put this down and we'll have a look at that. Um, if I, we go into, let's see here. No, I'll have to look at the um, an ocean documentation about how to get the temperature sensor up and running. But as you can see there now, we, we have the um, sensors now being detected from, that was the switch again. This one is the read relay. So the button, is, the learn button is on um, to make it detect the presence of it. And if I can get the magnet back off of there. When I put it in, it's closed, open, bring the magnet close to it again, it's closed, and open again, so that's perfect. Uh, the temperature sensor, I'm not sure how we get that one up and running yet, I'll have to read the instructions. Um, it's teach in, um, it's got no profile at the moment and no manufacturer ID, so I'll have to have a look at how we get that one up and running. But um, good news is, it didn't take two months to get that up and running, I had to go away and research a couple of things just for the install of the um, FEM because it relies on FEM to operate. <clears throat> if you were using the uh, 3000 transmitter which plugs in the USB port, uh, you could actually diagnose some issues and, and see it working using the uh, a serial connection. But with the um, Wi-Fi, uh, sorry, not Wi-Fi, with the radio module plugged in, which is the one we have here, um, you actually need to have FEM up and running to be able to communicate with it. And it also uh, performs an initialization of the radio module. So that pretty much um, has now got everything up and running that we want to see. I will, um, in the next video, put together some details on using the temperature sensor um, as well. But for now, I think that's enough to see that everything is up and running. If I'm going to have a quick look right now, and if I can find it, I will include how to read from the temperature sensor. Otherwise, um, look for the next video coming out.